Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris and in today's episode as we continue on with our VGC Series 9 content, we are going to be featuring an Iraq winner team with some very cool picks in here, specifically that Cinderace there that is at the top of the team. As always, you'll find the, the poker pace for this team down in the description below. We'll have a couple of games with the team as always, we'll pilot it through, hopefully have a lot of fun while we're doing it and then we'll throw up the rental for you guys to try the team out for yourselves at the end of the episode so hopefully you enjoyed this one today as i say we'll have a couple of games with the team we'll talk through all the strategies ins and outs and everything and um it's uh, it's got some quirks to it and some throwbacks to some old series as well in here so hopefully we can get all the kind of things going that we want to in this episode and uh, sit back and enjoy hopefully you do enjoy it without further ado we'll get into our first match of today right okay first up today we have a heatran grimmsnarl a rillaboom porygon 2 zapdos and urshifu team so uh what are we looking at speed control from the p2 for a trick room mode and then airstream from zapdos otherwise it would be something like scary face from the Grimmsnarl looking at screen support as well. Uh, the Heatran looks pretty scary here, but I mean, the, to be honest, like Araquanid in Trick Room does an amazing job against pretty much most things on this team. Got to be very careful around the Zapdos, of course, Airstream and Electric type attacks on something that Araquanid wants to deal with. But if we can get the weakness policy set up on it, I think we should be all right, even with screens there. Uh, it's just about getting a, uh, uh, yeah, it's just about getting the Trick Room set up, to be honest. Um, what helps us do that the best? Um, I could see Urshifu coming out from my opponent as a way to kind of prevent that. I'm kind of tempted to lead like Wimmy Cinderace, I think. It helps pave the way and then Araquanid like Dusclops in the back. Yeah, let's go for that and let's try and um, get set up that way. And see if we can get off to a good start on this nice easy friday afternoon setting us up perfectly for a good weekend all i want is the spider mode to work but there's you know there's other modes in there the wimmy in the cinderace and the wimmy in the thunderous works quite nicely as well we are going to see grim snarl and zapdos come off from my opponent all right hmm so wow we could get some huge damage onto the the Zapdos early on, or we could get rid of the Grimmsnarl. The Grimmsnarl is maybe not a bad target to kind of go after, but we can't tickle that slot because of its dark typing, unfortunately. I don't really want a Tailwind right now. We could help in hand as well to get around potential fake out. Um, but I mean, we could just go tickle and then just go for a Pyro Ball. I don't really want to max Cinderace because I kind of want to max Araquanid in this match. We are going to see the Zapdos max, but we're going to be able to get that Tickle and Pyro Ball off. So that's that's a nice option for us to uh, to go down. Uh, Wimmy should get through this turn, depending on what the Grimmsnarl does, of course. But I'd imagine we see an Airstream into Wimmy here. So no fake up from the Grimmsnarl. Probably see screens as we get a Tickle into the Zapdos. Trick. Uh huh. Okay. Ah, flavor of the week at the minute, this trick Grimmsnarl stuff. So we lose our life orb, but I mean, it's kind of alright. We get a huge Pyro Ball into that Zapdos, which is always useful. Um, and then the Airstream taking us down, which is fine. Okay. So this sets us up pretty well for getting Dusclops onto the field, getting our Trick Room set up. Um, and then getting a rack when it in, but it does leave us a little bit short with kind of you know, we have to get a rack when it in pretty sharpish, is where we want my opponent to kind of take down the whimsicott this 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 time around. But I don't know if they will. Um, okay, let's go moonblast and let's go trick room, and then we, we could see like screens here from Grimmsnarl, I think it makes sense. No fake tears coming out. Okay. Are we seeing that into Dusclops? Okay. Max Lightning. Bada bada boom. We should take it though. What? We actually don't take it. What? Minus two. How is that Zapdos so strong? Now we're knackered. Now we are knackered. Um, <laughs> uh, Raquin is not going to be able to do the job. 
Not going to be able to do the job. We get the special attack drop, which is always useful. But a Raccoonit is in a bad, 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 bad place. And without Trick Room, what can we do? I didn't expect that to take us down, though. I really didn't. Okay. Gonna we'll have to go Moonblast. Um, and I think we have to go Max Guard, you know? I think we have. Uh, did we go Max Guard or do we? I think we just protect. I think we go Moonblast and protect here. Because I think what we can do is have our weakness policy procced by the Zapdos. If they decide to attack, attack into the Araquanid here. They may not, though. You know? The problem is Araquanid's so slow, it can't really take advantage of the. Um, a tailwind, which is a little bit unfortunate, as we see a fake tears and max lightning. Okay, this should just proc. Yep, okay. Taking a bit too much damage for my liking, but at the same time, you know, the thing is, if we get another special attack drop with the Moonblast, then we're sitting in not the worst spot. Is the Moonblast going to be enough? Oh, it is enough. Okay, crit. That's huge for us. Zapdos down. Now it's all down to Araquanid. Can Araquanid do this? That's the question. Wimmy has Tickle. And we have a full health Wimmy. Chipped away. Ooh, okay. P2. It's got Thunderbolt. It's got Thunderbolt. It's got Thunderbolt. But a Tailwind might allow us to dodge might allow us to dodge the p2 like we'll be able to outspeed the p2 here i would imagine in a tailwind i'm hoping depends on the speed of the p2 but we cannot dodge the fake tears but can a plus two max geyser take down this p2 gotta hope it can i, I if we had the rain up i would be way more confident Okay, Tailwind, come on, come on, Spidey. Spidey, you can do this, come on, come on. Ooh, we don't see the f fake tears. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, that's good. Special attack drop, that's fine. We'll take that all day long. Max Geyser, we get the rain up, which is ideal. Oh! <laughs> P2 killer, here we go. Okay, we didn't even need the rain. I've never seen a P2 bar drop so quick. That was amazing. Oh, that was so satisfying. Okay, inertia food coming in. We should have this now from a really bad looking spot to a pretty good looking spot. Now, do we go after the inertia food here or do we go after the Grim Snarl? I'm kind of tempted to go after the Grim Snarl and just Moonblast. Yeah, because I think the Urshifu may protect here. No, no, I'll protect. But then the Moonblast is kind of fine anyway. Not near enough. Okay, Surgeon, Surgeon Strikes. Is there going to be enough to get the Wimmy? No, nowhere near. Maybe with a, a Spirit Break, you'd probably get it. But then you, you're not going to be able to deal with the Araquanid. Spirit Break, double up into Wimmy, I would imagine. Yeah, going to be enough. But Araquanid, last spider standing. This should be enough to get Grimmsnarl. I would, yeah, no doubt about it. If we drop a P2 like we just did, there's no way that Grimmsnarl's taking that. And there's no way that Urshifu's taking that either. Even though it resists it, we're just clicking the same button. Spider is too good. Okay, this is the perfect start for us here. I didn't think we'd get through this, you know. I mean, we get lucky taking the Zapdos down when we did, right? There's the uh, Detect. How much is it going to do through Detect? Rain boosted, plus two. Let's see. I'd love it to knock out. I would really love it to knock out. Very close. Very close. But the nice thing is we resist every single attack that the Urshifu's got access to. So we're kind of alright. Big spider, mini spider. No more totem, Araquanid. Uh, and we'll just go for a liquidation. And we'll be able to pick the win up here to kick us off in f fine form today, which is perfect. 
my opponent just thinking about what they got. I mean, they could have a surprise option. Surgeon Strikes, let's see what this does. It's doing respectable damage, you know. It's not bad damage. We've taken a bit more uh, damage initially. Might have been a different story. Especially boosted by the rain. Bosh. There we go. Good game to my opponent. Didn't make it easy. The big thing for us was obviously getting rid of the Zapdos. But when the Zapdos dropped the Dusclops, I thought everything was that everything was gone at that point. I thought there's no coming back. We can't. Araquanid cannot function without its trick room. But it turned out we didn't do too bad after all. So um nice one for us to kick off with and with that friends we will jump straight over into our next match of the episode okay up next we've got ethan playing a team of metagross spectre whimsicott charizard regirock and tapu finney so uh quite a nice team here we've got tailwind support from the whimsicott probably got sunny day as well to support the charizard uh you've probably got bulldoze on the spectre that'll probably work with the metagross proper weakness policy there and disrupt everything on our side of the field uh reggie rock just one of those pokemon that's pretty obnoxious to deal with maybe curse there um and that kind of set and then the type of thing kind of rounds things off with terrain support i guess which helps protect the metagross if you do get that weakness policy activated now well, how are we approaching this one because i feel like dusclops araquanid in a trick room can be very very good here the issue would be um well is that much of an issue getting our trick room up not a great deal um i probably shouldn't lead urshifu but i kind of like thunderous is the best option for us here maybe with with Wimmy. Mm, maybe urshifu is better than dusclops she said i don't want to get blown i don't want dusclops to get blown up by like charizard turn one which would be uh pretty awkward which is where like thunderous would give a little bit more protection araquanid in turn two and then i think round things off with urshifu and can we lock it in we can just about just about running out of time um okay urshifu not bad late game pokemon at all that's tough though because you kind of want the urshifu there as, as protection you want the thunderous there as protection so it's making that that kind of the right call see what my opponent leads out with though and we'll see how right we were okay spectria and reggie rock because you've got to worry about taunt from the spectria which is the big the big issue of course safety goggles salt vest okay I don't know if we'll be able to get... I don't think we're going to be able to get our Trick Room up. But getting Urshifu onto the field isn't a bad thing at all in this situation. Um, I don't want to max Thunderous. I think just a foul play into Spectre is not a bad shout. We'll be able to get it off before the Reggie Rock can, can, can attack. Yeah, there's a Taunt. Like, our job here is to get rid of the Spectre and then it gives us a kind of a, a bit more room to... Um, Oh, it's not even close to picking up the knockout. Wow. Mm, Rock Slide going to do a big chunk of damage. Okay, well, we probably want to preserve Thunderous for later on in this game. And I think it's probably not a bad idea going for the Wicked Blow into the Spectre. And now pulling the switch with Thunderous into Dusclops will not take much damage from a Rock Slide from the Reggie Rock. And I can't see the Spectre going for something like Taunt into Thunderous here. They may predict the switch from our end but even burnt urshifu will be able to get the spectra from this range so I don't, i'm not worried too much about the will-o-wisp and the best case scenario is we just force the spectra out and it opens the door for dusclops to get yeah get a free kind of trick room up okay finny coming in that's all right And the nice thing in knowing that the, the Reggie Rock is a Soul Fest is, you know, we, it can't set up things like Curse and stuff like that, which is sometimes the, the big problem, big problem um, moves that it's got, and you kind of don't want to allow it that much room. But knowing it's got the Soul Fest, you know it hasn't got those options, so it can just sit there and and just attack, 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 in that, in that sort of sense, you know. Uh, Drain Punch coming out, that's fine. I think we're going to use Urshifu as kind of cannon fodder this next turn as we set up a trick room. 
The big worry here, of course, would be uh, the Tapu Fini having like Taunt. It might use the room to Calm Mind as well, but I think we use this this room to go just for a close combat into Reggie, Reggie Rock, and uh, have Urshifu go down. And Urshifu is one of those Pokemon that you can't really ignore. So you kind of it it it's not like my opponent's going to leave it alone this turn while the Trick Room gets set up. They need to deal with it now because it's just such a threat in the late game, and pretty much any point of the game when it's on the field, we're going to see a Drain Punch and the Calm Mind. Okay, well this is. This is still alright actually. Actually this is super fine. This is super fine. Drain punch. Better be okay, that's fine. Yeah, get your health back. Now, I think we can catch this Tapu Fini off guard. Because we do have poison jab on our Araquanid. I don't know if it's worth going for it now or whether or not we go after the the Reggie Rock initially. I don't want the Tapu Fini to get too much health back though. And I don't really want to set the rain up for the Finny either because with the Calm Mind it's going to be able to do... Oh, is it going to be able to do really much damage? I don't think it is. I don't think so. I think we just max guys of the Reggie Rock. I think we just go Rock Tomb. I think we just proc our weakness policy and just go out of town on the the, uh, the Reggie Rock to be honest. And we can worry about the Tapu Finny after. It might go for the... it might max here and go for max starfall but i mean it's not going to be knocking anything out on our side of the field or getting close to it. it's not going to two hit car or anything either um max geyser in the rain is a different story with dusclops of course but i think we get rid of reggie rock now and then we go after the tapu Fini maybe the next turn Depends what comes in. Like if Spectre comes in as well, obviously that's going to be a big target that can do big damage. And at the end of the day, we still got Thunderous in the back that can come in in the, the very late game against that Finny um, and pick up a knockout with 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 Wild Charge. We're not going to see the Finny Max here. I wonder if it's going to go for another Calm Mind potentially. Well, we proc that weakness policy. Here goes the spider. Bye bye, Reggie Rock. Now what comes in? Now you got to think that the Spectre is pro. Ah, oh, the Spectre isn't sashed. It's a safety goggle, so we can definitely get rid of that in one one turn. See a moon blast. Now that's not doing too bad damage, but I do think a nightshade and a poison jab. Mm, Max Ooze, that's the issue, isn't it? It's limited. Okay, I think what we do is we go after the Spectria. But this is the turn where I think the, the Finny maxes, if I'm honest. I think it maxes now. And Max Star Falls. So. Is Spectre got Protect? It's unlikely, like Spectre very rarely carry Protect. Yeah, so we're just going to see the Nightshade. No Max yet, either. Right, that's the damage we need. We just need that again next turn with the, the Max, the Poison Jab, and then we're done. So Spectre going down. I go in front of the Moonblast, I think. Yeah. Okay, it's fine. And then we have to we have to double tap the Finny this next turn, I think. Depending on what their last Pokemon is, of course. It's Charizard. Okay, that's fine. Well like we don't mind that. One little bit. How many turns of Trick Room we got left? Um two. Yeah. Let's go Max Who's into Tapu Finny. And go Nightshade into Tapu Finny. And I think that combination should be enough to get Finny. I just worry about, like, obviously Max Ooze isn't the, the, the best. It would be better, like, obviously getting rid of... And now it protects. Of course now it protects. Because we're going to see a hurricane from the Charizard, I don't imagine. No, the Charizard protects. This is better for us, actually, because... 
Now we've got the poison jab, which is a lot more powerful, and that will be able to knock out the Finny. But we could actually choose to just go after the Charizard the next turn, I think. Because that's the Pokemon that causes a bit more of an issue, because it's got access to speed control, it's got access to residual damage from the GMAX Wildfire. So going after that this next turn, especially on our last turn of Trick Room, it's probably the better option, even though... Um, the Finny might be able to pick us up, especially if they max and go max Starfall. But let's just, just check. I'm sure we got one turn. Yeah, last turn of Trick Room left. We're there. We're there. Are we? Are we plus three special attack with a rack on it? <laughs> we are. Uh, we should have like Surf here. Um, no, what are we doing? We're going Liquidation into Charizard, and we're going Nightshade into Tapu Finny. I think it's going to be the Zard that maxes, but there's no way it's taking a rain boosted liquidation. Plus two, no, no chance. Finny's your best, yeah. Finny is the best, the best option you've got. But then I think it's going to take too much damage from a Nightshade, um, and I think a Wild Charge Nightshade's going to be enough. Charizard going for the double protect, which, yeah, makes sense. Nightshade, do some nice damage. Uh, liquidation. And I don't think the poison jab there would have been enough to get the finny. It'd be nice if we survived this and then we could maybe find out, but I don't think we're going to be able to take a plus one star fall from this range. No, finny going to be able to do the job. But I mean now we just wild charge into the finny and set the trick room up. And that combination is going to be more than enough for at least either picking the knock up out with, with Thunderous or clearing clear, cleaning up with Dusclops after that. So the timing's perfect for us. And this wraps up the episode pretty nicely before we get that rental card for you all. So the spider's done pretty well in this in these games today, which is always nice to see. Uh, yeah, we'll go for the wild charge and we will go for a cheeky old trick room to wrap this one up. I don't think wild charge is going to be enough to take down the finny. If we were live orb, I'd, I'd say otherwise. I think, yeah, we'd probably get it, but I don't think from this range, it, it might, it might. We might be very, very surprised here, but I don't think. Oh, okay, max guard, which is fine, which makes sense, you know, they want to avoid that, but the nightshades are going to be more than enough from the dust clops, and we've got pain split as well. If we're in a really awkward spot. This is where, like, fly would have been the real, like, the big call there. Uh, fly trick room just to get around these max turns from my opponent uh, we'll just go wild charge again and then we just go nightshade and a few nightshades especially with leftovers recovery going to be more than capable of, of closing this one down for us max guys I wonder if you go after no nah, you can't go after the, the dustclops here you have to go after thundy can't afford to take a wild charge with the rain up Mm, now you're relying on like muddy waters. It's still gonna be quite close, you know. The Finny's not gonna like, yeah. Let's see. It's got to be close to like two nightshades, though. I think two nightshades will do it. It has, yeah. Will 100% will do it. Two nightshades. So there's gonna have to be a lot of protecting around Dusclops here. Yeah, there's one protect. Get this leftovers health back. <sighs> And then you're relying on muddy water not missing, you know. There's some leftover recovery. But still, I still believe two nightshades will still do the trick, even after the leftover recovery. So there's one nightshade, and then they're going to protect the next turn after this. Yeah, we get it. Muddy water. Okay. Oof. Oof. Oof, that does a lot of damage. That does a lot of damage. It does a lot more than what I expected it to do. So, let's go for that Nightshade. I mean, how many turns of Trick Room we got left? One. They just protect here. Uh, this might be a bit tricky. We might lose this, you know. Yeah, with the trick room ending now. 
Um, hmm. I think it's just out of sight now, so we have to tr we have to trick room and just hope. I mean, we sh uh, we should take another muddy water. The moon blast. We'll take this. Yeah, and then we have to pain split. Oh, but then the rain does stop. I don't think a pain split's going to help us out one little bit. And I think they just win now. Finny too good. Finny too good. Uh, unless they protect here. I think we have to pain split at this point. Yeah, they protect. I mean, the more health they get, the better. Because then we pain split and then we can nightshade. We just got to hope that... Um, the pain split is going to be enough recovery for us to, to take a Moonblast. But it's tricky. Fifty-four, is it gonna be enough? They got fifty-four. They're gonna be they're gonna be out of range of yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to do it. Nah. And I don't think the crit even mattered there. Very good game to my opponent, really well played with the Tapu Fini there. We maybe should have dealt with it a little bit earlier, but I mean, it's difficult at that point, isn't it? Like, which which decision do you make? Um, obviously, the Chores are double protecting. Probably would have been wiser at that point to go for the Finny with the Poison Jab and Night Nightshade. It was the bigger threat, of course, but you can't discount things like Hurricane on Charizard. So I think I, I don't really have any regrets from that. I think my opponent just played it very well. But we got to see the Spider in action as well. So that is that is all that matters. So very good game to my opponent there. Nice one for us to end on. And um, we'll jump over now and get you all the rental code for today's team. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. And I hope if you do try it out, you have a lot of fun with it. Obviously, it's got a lot of tricks within it to uh, help you kind of get through teams and rip holes in teams to kind of get the position for a late game sweep with the Araquanid set up. Obviously, the uh, the tickle there works really nicely with the Whimsicott onto uh, Cinderace and supporting Thunderous and even the Urshifu to a certain extent. But the big kind of core of the team is going to be the Dusclops and the Araquanid. The, obviously, the, the Rock Tomb there and getting their weakness policy procced and then going from there makes things very, uh, very dangerous and uh, difficult for your opponent to kind of get a handle on. If you do try the team out, though, please let me know in the comment section as always if you do and if you've had fun with it. And uh, that's a big thing with this team. I think it's just having a bit of fun with it. But it might inspire some ideas to take forward. I do think Araquanid is a very dangerous Pokemon and under the, the right circumstances. It's just getting it set up, which is sometimes a bit tricky. Obviously, getting the Trick Room set up and then getting the Weakness Posse activated and then having some support around there. Maybe we, um, something like a Lightning Rod support might be something to think about with Araquanid. That could definitely help out. Um, and some maybe more solid, faster Pokemon to have up top. You know, the, the problem with like things like Whimsicott, Cinderace, and Thunderous to a certain extent, even with the Assault Vest, is they're all quite frail Pokemon and go down quite quickly. So you've got to get returns uh, on each kind of turn playing out with these Pokemon. Otherwise, the game kind of slips away from you quite fast. So have fun with the team. As I say, thank you as always for tuning in. Have a great weekend, whatever you're up to. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you all soon for another episode here on the channel. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.